Can we talk about, this is the first time in like months that we've been in a parking still lot. Cold. And like, but it's sunny. Yeah, it's still cold. And though. I don't have my coat on. We're in hoodies and yeah. just hoodies. But like, it is kind of one of those where you, you want to have the hood up. Yeah. Still. Hey guys, welcome to Downshift. My name is Paulo. And my name is Matt. And we're here with the kind of new Hyundai Palisade. This thing and its sister, the Kia Telluride, have been absolute commanders of the segment ever since that kind of came out in 2018. But for here in 2024, we're one year past the facelift. We're going to show you exactly how this thing stacks up with the best and the rest. <laughs> And the first and really kind of the only issue that I have with the car, and it's not even really an issue, it's just the engine and you only get one option. You get the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6, and we are gonna talk more about this engine on the pro side of the video, but as a con in 2024 here, we are starting to see pretty much everything go towards turbocharged four cylinders or turbocharged four cylinders with hybrids or plug-in hybrids. We've got the CX-90 that's plug-in, we've got the Grand Highlander that's plug-in or normal hybrid, or sorry, not plug-in, but I just kind of might expect to see a hybrid component in newer Palisades. 21 MPG, it's fine. It actually does a little bit better than that, at least in my testing, but I just might like to see a hybrid component here for a little bit better fuel economy in the future. We're talking about the Kia sister Telluride. That thing has a full EV counterpart in the EV9, and we haven't heard anything about the Palisade yet, although I'm sure that's very close on the heels of the EV9, so we might get that in the next year or so. And then realistically, the only other place that I can ding this car, and it's a very small nitpick, is the fact that you still need one of these to connect to CarPlay. And secondarily, Paulo, what did you say about the port here? Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't have a USB-C. You only have an old-style USB. So with the new iPhones, you're going to have to get a little adapter like I did here. Yeah, and I mean, like, if that's the small nitpicky stuff that we're putting on the con side of the list with the engine, I mean, I also don't love the way that this thing looks, at least compared to the Telluride, but this should tell you it's a pretty good car. So let's talk about all the good things down into second, furious downshifting, rolling on power. I mean, <laughs> really shouldn't be doing this all the time, but it, it's like kind of sporty-ish, you know? It's not like super lame or floaty. This has got a more disciplined chassis and suspension system than something like the Grand Highlander. Now, the only things that I think might be better dynamically behind the wheel are the CX-90 and the Honda Pilot. The Honda Pilot's all-wheel drive system is actually like pretty fun. And then the Mazda does Mazda things. But this, I think, strikes a great balance between kind of a little bit of fun, but still knowing what it is still knowing that you're going to put kids in here, still knowing that you're going to take road trips in here. It has to be comfortable. And I think with that, we'll go back into comfort mode. Now I can feel the, the bolster is kind of softening off me. And it's just nice. And through a theme of this video, you're going to hear about how this is basically bordering and edging in on like luxury car territory, at least in the features that you get here, because on paper, you're getting all the same stuff that you would get in like an Audi, Mercedes, BMW. You've got heated and cooled seats, three levels for each. You have a heated steering wheel. Look at that. And for new for this year, you've got a button just on the driver's side, your ergo motion seat, and you can select what type of massage that you would like. It's okay, I've had better massages, obviously, but those cars are like double the money that this Palisade is. And this also will have like active bolstering to kind of hug you a little bit more like Paulo has in his G70 when he goes into sport mode. And it's just kind of nice stuff like that. You also get a dedicated sunroof up here and it's split from the panel one in the second row because the front one will actually go back and vent unlike you know just a simple glass roof that you would have in a full panel panoramic roof but all the stuff that you would use on a normal car is physical your physical climate control buttons you've got physical buttons here uh, for your heated and cooled seats and everything like that and like a family vehicle you'd expect huge amounts of storage you've got the center console here with deployable cup holders that go away you've also got a really deep center bin glove box and some additional storage underneath and in the door cards and pretty much throughout the car. Storage is pretty, pretty good in here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's just so much places you can charge things and have different sorts of outlets. You have charging pad here, there, have a few outlets down here, and then obviously as well in here. So that's really nice. I also like how they have three level auto zone. Yeah, the auto climate control I think is nice. It is interesting that this is USB-A, but in here is USB-C, yeah. and also in the backs of the front seats, also USB-C. So I'm wondering why they left this one as USB-A. Maybe they forgot. Weird quirk. And I know we kind of touched briefly on styling and I said that maybe the Telluride looks a little bit better, but I do think with this facelift, it still does look fairly handsome. At least 
less polarizing than some of the other Hyundai models, but let's focus specifically on what was new and refreshed for last year, the 2023. Most specifically is just the front grille. Everything is more squared off. The grille shape is more vertical here, horizontal here. Also your inserts here are completely more um, angular and geometric. These little uh, diodes here are just for your turn signals. Your running lights are the cascade effect, but again, it is more squared off and vertical. And then these projectors here are your normal headlights. So really it is kind of just the face that's new. But my favorite thing about this car, and it's gonna be really hard to see here today, but I'll lay a B-roll clip over, is this robust emerald or robust green. The color here is fantastic. It looks black 90% of the time, unless you get it in direct sunlight. And then it's this really vibrant green with a lot of metal flake. Around the side here, we do have painted wheel arches, 20 inch wheels for the calligraphy, turn signals on the mirrors, and then chrome stuff. The profile is basically identical to the previous Palisade. The only other place that it's maybe a little bit different from the pre-facelift is down here in this lower diffuser. You do have a full width. Um, this isn't even a tail bar. This is just kind of a reflector. You've got your reverse lights, and then it's a little bit more squared off down here in your diffuser. But Paolo, what do you think of the styling here? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it's definitely less polarizing than some of the other models that Hyundai has. Um, I'm a huge fan of the nightshade edition. Yeah. I think when you have kind of the black or the, the grill um, blacked out looks really, really nice. I think this is just a bit too much chrome for me, but I really do like the the new facelift that they that they brought to this. It looks really, really good. And I agree with the paint. This paint is just phenomenal, especially in the right lightings. So the question then becomes, would you have this or a Grand Highlander or a Mazda CX-90 in terms of just styling? That is a very good question. I might go Mazda. I think I would go this with the nightshade. Really? Yeah. Let's move it on. Is he in prison or mm, was? I'm not sure. He lost the other eyeball? I think he still has that eyeball. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of the great things about this car is the practicality and also the towing. You get 5,000 pounds of towing capacity here, kind of across the board. But the thing that I really love about this car is the cargo practicality. We were just in the Subaru Ascent, the Mazda CX-90, and those had smaller trunks, and this does pretty well. With the third row up, you actually have decent space back here. It's about 18 cubic feet of space, and you can lift this up, and you have a pretty big cubby back here. You've got your jack kind of nice and neatly uh, nestled in but you do have powered third row, power operating third row for both your left and your right. Now this is a pretty luxurious feature that we're kind of used to seeing from other manufacturers, but I do like that you have it. When you put the rear seats down, the third row down, what are we looking at, 46 Correct. cubic feet of space? I mean, as you can see, that's pretty good. That's pretty practical. Now the second row, you can drop from the trunk. It's not electronic, but you can drop them which isn't going to drop because Paolo's <laughs> reclined the seat for when we were shooting up front. But with this seat down, you're looking at about 86 cubic feet of space, which is, if not segment leading, just about there, within five cubic feet of space. And it is truly massive back here. And the reason that you're probably buying this is to get into the third row. You just simply push this button, mechanically whirs itself out of the way. That's why it doesn't come back up from the trunk because it's a mechanical system, not an electrical system. I kind of like that because then it's going to be quicker. It's less likely to break or need to be replaced with expensive motors, but then it's pretty easy to get back here. I'm 6'1 for reference. I'm going to pop back here into the third row. Now it's not like palatial. It's not like a huge place for me to be, but I can move or I can have this person move forward because they have a lot of room, but you have some really, really nice stuff back here. You do have USB-C, you've got some cup holders back here, but you also have power recline because again, the third row is powered and I've never seen this in another car in this class. And I don't know that I've ever even seen this in the luxury tier, like an X7 or a GLS or a Q7 from Audi. You have three level heated seats back here. Again, I've never seen that. Of course, you get air vents, super nice headliner, and that normal stuff, but I've never seen, if you've seen it in the, if you've seen it in another car, leave it down in the comments that has a heated third row. And we'll do the second row, but I wanna to again touch on the doors first. It's just about 90 degrees. Not quite, but definitely still practical enough to be easy to load stuff like a child in here. But look at all this texture that you get here on your kick plate. You've got aluminum here for your sill. You've got some textured material for your kick plate in here. And then we'll step in. Again, I'm 6'1", I have loads of knee room, plenty of headroom, especially with this big moon roof. Uh, not gonna hit my nub, you guys know that. I can recline, or I can slide, I can also recline pretty easily, and it's just a nice place to be. Close the door, I've got cup holders in the door because they're not here on the center console. And also in the door you have 
a little privacy shade, which is nice again if you have kids, but my box style pinstriping, that is pretty cool. And also the leather is really, really nice. And not just that, you do have a climate zone back here. You do have three level heated seat. You do have three level cooled seat. You've got household outlet, 12 volt, and additional, like we said, USB-C chargers in the seat backs, plus an insane amount of storage, not just a single mat pocket here, but a smaller one here and <laughs> more storage here. Like there's nothing you can't get in the second row. And up in the front, we talked about some of the luxuries already, but we have to talk about the technology, of course. You do have things like a head-up display, a bunch of different colors, driver assist stuff in there, as you might expect. You also got 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. It's pretty nice, it doesn't change a whole lot, but it gives you a lot of information here in the center, which it will do now. Um, but anyway, we'll come back. Look at this, this is 12.3 inch center screen and it's kind of the classic Hyundai infotainment system. You've got the highlights, the classics, the big hits, the passenger talk. So it's gonna isolate my voice through a microphone either in the ceiling or wherever it is and then project it in the third row. So I don't have to take my eyes off the road to then yell at my kids in the back. You've also got quiet modes, which will dull the speakers in the back, turn them off. So if you've got kids sleeping in the back, you're not gonna disrupt them while you're jamming out up here. And then of course, we've got our sounds of nature. Now, I personally am a lively forest enthusiast, but there's a bunch of new ones, and they're not new at this point anymore, but you've got Sailing Ship, City at Dawn, look at these guys, they're definitely in a rom-com, Experience the Universe, very Neil deGrasse Tyson, I mean, it goes on. The one that I think is kind of strange is Harbingers of Spring. Now, when I hear the word Harbinger, that has a negative connotation, like conquerors or bringers of, like, bad things, but spring, I think, is a good thing, so I don't know why they would call it this. The only place that I would realistically kind of ding this is what we talked about earlier. It's the wired Apple CarPlay versus the wireless, but the rest of it is perfectly good. Throw it into reverse. You've got 360 cameras with the augmented reality view. Again, this is a Hyundai product, so it's always going to be white. In a Toyota, you can change your color, but I mean, who cares realistically? Uh, it's just really nice. The resolution's good. It's not warping like you get in the Toyota, even the Lexus. Don't forget you also have a digital rear view mirror and then some Very of the nice. Uh, safety suite and lane keep assist driver assist features are also really, really good and impressive here. Yeah. Um, tell us your experience with the, <laughs> it actually does, it has lane change assist features now as well. Yeah, so one of the nice things about Hyundai's HDAS system, it's kind of consistently in our top five, if not if not then, then definitely the top 10. It's a very good system though. One of the things I like for this year is you can use the lane keeping without needing to be in cruise control. So if you're just kind of hanging out, you want to modulate your own speed, you can still have the car kind of turn for your, or turn for you and keep yourself in your lane. But it also has a new system now where it'll automatically change lanes for you. Now I say that and it will, but I'll lay a B-roll clip over again of me doing it. You do still have to have your hand on the wheel. So it is definitely a gimmick. You can't just like request a lane change and then have it do it for you. You still have to have your hands on the wheel, which does kind of defeat the purpose of it, but it will do it. And that's kind of the first step in development of a higher and more robust system like that. So safety suite and the rest of the technology here, very good. And one of the last big things we'll talk about is price. Now the Palisade, as it starts in SE with front wheel drive, starts at about 36.6, right? 36,650. Yes. And that just about undercuts pretty much everything. I think an Ascent is a little bit cheaper, but this is generally, to be had, a great value. And here, just about topped out with the calligraphy. We don't have the night package or whatever it is, but in the calligraphy here, we're about 53,650. That's with destination. And that's still coming in under something like a CX-90, under something like a Grand Highlander, those hybrid equipped vehicles that we talked about earlier. So again, what you're getting here is a hugely value-based package. And I think you're getting a lot of car for the money here. So let's cover a couple odds and ends and then go for a drive. Like for one, you get Smart Park. So it will drive itself forward and backward if you want to spend 20 minutes doing that. And I think I showed you this before. You do have keyless entry on your front doors, but not your rear doors. So imagine you're carrying a child, you need to get into the rear. You're going to have to put that child down to unlock the car or go to the front door, unlock it, and then come back here. Just a slight annoyance. And now this car also functions as a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is quite nice. And the gear selector is interesting. It may be push buttons, but watch, I'm gonna go from park into drive and it's gonna light up reverse, neutral, and then drive. See that? It does it quickly, but it still cycles through all the gears to move. Funny. And you do have five different drive modes. You've got smart, which will kind of adapt to your driving style, sport, obvious, comfort, 
obvious. It's funny because usually comfort is what they call it in luxury cars, and then normal is what they call it in kind of economy cars. But here, this is so luxurious that they still call it comfort. But you have eco, you have snow for additional traction, and you can even lock the center differential if you want to send the same amount of power to the front as to the back. But it does have a speed limit. I don't know, I think it's like 40 miles an hour. So ab above 40 miles an hour, this will turn itself off. We're on our merry about what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with that. About. Our we're merry about like we're, way. We're, uh, we're on our merry way? Yeah. Here we are. The Palisade Calligraphy. Are we merry? We are on our merry way. And jolly? Bout. Merry bout way. Merry bout way. Um, I really like this thing. Yeah. Uh, there's like nothing not to like about this car. Yeah, I think on my, we can talk about the dislikes because I mean, we only had two in the video. And then me personally, I think, agree, I wish they had a hybrid option, which I, I do think is coming, or at least an EV option. Um, the other one is, I do just wish this uh, center console padding was a bit extended because oh. I want to be able to... Oh, yeah, you're right about at the end there. Yeah, I want to be able to hold the steering wheel with my right hand while it's rested, and I just sometimes struggle a little bit with doing that. I try to pull the steering wheel a bit closer Doesn't to me. Doesn't come back that far. Does not come back that far. So that would be like, my left hand's really good, um, and I, I like the steering wheel design, like the how you can back. actually yeah. hold it here. Um, that's just like such a minor thing. Like, I mean, in terms of... I actually have a minor thing now that I've now that I've thought about it. Yeah, what's yours? The so, cup holders? No, it's with the steering column. I hit my knee on it constantly. Oh, yeah, because it, it doesn't... It comes down a little bit under the underneath the steering wheel, and I brush my knee on I don't hit it hard, but I brush yeah. it. And well, it's like, okay. And it's not, it's not that luxe yet where it has the auto, uh, like, go-away steering wheel. It has the auto... Uh, yeah, it, it seat. removes your it moves your seat back when yeah, you get it in but and it out. But it doesn't auto like retract the yeah, um, yeah. the That's steering wheel. That's interesting. But uh, pros? Oh wait, we're going to say Can we just say if these are the things we're complaining about, it's a pretty solid car. Yeah, absolutely. You know, okay. So yeah, pros. So uh, yeah, likes my favorite things. I would say the first one is price. I mean, this thing is obviously pricing out a lot of competitors. That's why I think you see so many of them is just because, yeah. you know, the bang for the buck here is just incredible. Yeah. Um, it's extremely luxurious, that's the second thing, like all the luxe features that you get and also the comfort features and like, yeah, some of the textures and yeah. different like materials they're using in here. It's just like so the, good. The pinstripe is so my body. I love it. It's cool. I love the pinstripe. It's kind of cool. And then the quilting you get, even on the door card, like they didn't have to do this. I know. And then the speaker covers, like it's just, I it's mean, great. We're going to get a Lexus IS 500 in two weeks. It's not going to have this detailing in the door card. It's going to be way simpler yeah. for like the same money. And a Lexus. Right. So I think Hyundai's is doing a really good job here. Especially with like, this is to me their flagship. And totally. then the third thing is like, this is a legit three row. Like they, 100%. they, they walk the talk here. But here it is. I mean, you can have three rows up and still put stuff in the trunk. Yeah. And they deserve big points for that. And all the features that you have in the third row is just incredible as well. I've as never I seen. I really want to know in the comments if anybody knows of a three row vehicle that has heated third row or three level heated third row. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. How often are you going to use that? Also, like, vanishingly never. But it's but cool like, that you, you have, have it. it yeah. You know? For 55000 bucks. It's a box to tick on all those Hyundai ads. The Hyundai Pals is giving you this and the exactly. Grand Highlander's not giving you this. You know, that's. It's yeah, I mean, kind of cool. So talking about some of its competitors, this is kind of how I went in my head. I said I would take this over Telluride because this is more luxe and that's more sporty, more plastics and stuff in it the is. interior. The Telluride looks better, but this is nicer. Agreed. I agree it looks better. Um, 100%. The CX-90, I would say I didn't really love that um, powertrain with mm -hmm. the... The plug-in? Yeah, it just... I think they still have some some bugs to uh, work out there. Yeah, and that's a first gen, first year car, so that that could get better. But that that's one thing that we did both notice for sure. Um, yeah, I think this is a great car. Uh, I wanted to like the CX90 more than I ended up liking it. Now maybe that would change if we got the inline six, mm -hmm. and that would be a little bit more apples to apples with what we have here with the V6. Right. Um, a little bit because it's straight six and twin and turbo and whatever. But honestly, it's just. It's so hard, like I want them to update stuff in here and give us like a hybrid, but as it sits, it's just so complete as a three row, it just doesn't misstep. And I think it's hard to really argue against that in any way. I don't know. With that, that's kind of all I have. So yeah. thanks Hyundai for letting us have a go in your Palisade again. Um, and thank you to 
to you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, see you guys later.